Uh, hello, welcome to Turbo School, episode number three. I uh, hope you watched the first two episodes. Some of this, uh, some of the math we'll be using today, are derived from numbers we we figured out in the first two episodes. I'm not going to go over how we got those numbers. Um, those who have watched the first two episodes will be very familiar with those numbers, and those who have not, you may want to go back and watch those. You can watch this live, of course, but go back and watch those, and rewatch this one so you can understand how we get the numbers we're using and what they actually mean. So anyway, to start off, we're going to go back with our You know what we wanted, what we decided we want to do is 550 horsepower. That's to the ground. We want that to the ground, not at crank horsepower. We want this at 3,000 RPM. And we're going to do this in our older 12-valve Cummins engine because I got, a, I got one cheap to do all our turbo testing on. And so we are trying to figure out what kind of, how, what kind of power we can make at 3,000 RPM. We're trying to predict a few things. Our, our, first, our first thing is we randomly selected a 4.0 pressure ratio, if you remember. And that gives us about 45 pounds of boost, I think, uh, at sea level, and um, which is a pretty common number. A lot of guys around 45 pounds of boost. So we just kind of picked that number out to see how much we would get out of this, this truck here. And um, we found that was not enough boost to make our power at 3,000 RPM. And so we were trying to figure out, do we increase boost? That will work. Do we increase RPM? That will also work. And so we're Today's math is we're going to find out how to compensate for altitude. Because I don't live at sea level. We're, we test higher. So we're going to go over that right now. But first thing I want to talk about, in our last episode, I discussed uh, density ratio. And density ratio is the real thing you gotta, you got to know about. That's the big, important one. And I gave you a formula, was, which is um, your pressure ratio times your compressor efficiency. If you remember, I said if, you're, if you have a 4.0, uh, pressure ratio times that by your 0.72 compressor efficiency. That's going to give you a number. I believe it, I believe we came up with 2.88 was our was our boost. I believe I haven't looked back, but I'm pretty sure that's what we had as our pressure ratio. Now, this formula I was looking at it some more over this past week, and this is not a, this formula is not good enough. I'm trying to give you guys a way to get you in the ballpark. There's to find true density ratio, it's quite complicated. You got to have temperatures, pressures. You need some you need some gas constants. You need to rank. So it's more involved than I wanted to do here, because while some people would have no problem with that math, it's not terribly difficult. It just takes a long time, and I prefer to have a way to give you guys a to ballpark so you can be close enough to have an educated decision and make an educated decision, and to have an educated conversation if you call me or anybody else with turbos. And so the true, as I was reading the numbers, the actual numbers using the hardcore calculations, the true density ratio that we would have gotten was 2.4. And that's going to throw us off quite a bit from my uh, 2.88. That's going to throw the numbers off. So as I was running a little bit more intensely, I thought, well, we need to find a way to give you guys a, a closer approximation. I mean, this is not ballpark. This is, this is too far out. We need something closer. So those numbers, and this is my make-believe calculation. You're not going to find any books or anywhere, but it will get you close enough, especially to 4.0 pressure ratio. If you're lower or higher, it's going to be further off, but it'll at least get you in the game. So we're going to take the ratio. What we're going to do for this class is we're going to take our, uh, <coughs> excuse me, our pressure ratio, just like we did before. And we're going to multiply it by that compressor efficiency. Okay, then we're going to take this total and times it by 85%. That's going to give us a pretty close approximation to what it actually would be. When you do this math, it's going to give you... Well, where am I here? I'm on the wrong page. I'm pretty sure it's a 2.44. Yes. This is going to be a 2.448 density ratio. The true number for this is 2.4. So this is going to be pretty close to where we're at here. So. For now, for the rest of this thing, we're going to use this as our ballpark um, feature. The, just a little background, if you want to know, when you, we've talked about compressor map, and we're going to look at some more compressor maps today. But the efficiency, 
we know we're, we're saying a 72% efficiency. I want to tell you what that actually means. So in the perfect world, when you compress a gas, it gets hotter. You know, no matter what you do, just the act of compressing it will make it hotter. And so there's going to be an, an, a perfect or ideal change in temperature. You take something from 14 PSI to 100 PSI, it's going to increase in heat. In a perfect world, it may add 100 degrees. I'm sure it adds more than that. I'm just throwing this out there. Let's say it adds 100 degrees. Now your compressor efficiency, you'll take the 100 degrees, which is ideal, and you'll divide it by 72%. So you divide by 0.72, that's going to give you your true, your actual temperature increase. And so by doing well, the, the, the higher, obviously, if you were 100% efficiency efficient, you're dividing by, you know, 1.0, which would be perfect, you would not have any increase at all, 100 degrees. But since we're not, we're 72% in ours, divide by 0.72 and it gets a lot hotter. I haven't run that calculation. I'm not good at dividing in my head. Let's pull up my handy phone here because I am kind of curious how I'm talking to you. If we had 100 degrees and we divided it by 0.72, the actual increase would be 138 degrees. So, so in this case, with this compressor, we actually have a 138 degree increase in temperature. And that is the first start of figuring out density ratio. So that's what your actual compressor efficiency means. The higher your efficiency, the less it increases over perfect. Okay? I hope that makes sense because it will increase in temperature no matter what you do. The worse this gets, the hotter that gets. You've got to account for that in your calculations. Intercooler takes out a lot of it, but uh, it's still something to think about. So that is how we're going to discover density ratio for the remainder of this discussion. So using that, let's rework some numbers. Okay. First, we have our awesome engine that moves a, whole wha a whopping 233.72 CFM. We figured this out both in episode one and episode two, so figure it out. You can go back and watch how we know at 3,000 RPM, we're moving 233.72 CFM. That's the engine alone, not turbocharger. That's simply how much the engine is moving. We now know our density ratio. We're going to use our density ratio of 2.4, 2.44. When we multiply that, we're going to get a, a CFM rating of 570, that's a multiply, 570.26 CFM. So that's where we get, now this is just turbo alone without intercoolers. If you remember from episode one and two, a ballpark close enough approximation for intercooling is it adds 40 percent density ratio. So we're going to take this number and times it by 1.45. That's going to add 45 percent for intercooling. And that's going to yield approximately 826.9 CFM. That is, how many, that is how many cubic feet per minute the turbocharger is sucking in out of the atmosphere. Not, and the engine's only taking 233. The turbo has to suck in 826 to make that happen, okay? So we know, we know our first things. We're gonna times our CFM. We wanna convert this to a pounds per minute, right? So we're gonna times it. We're gonna times this, sorry. We are gonna multiply this by 0.069. And that's going to yield our conversion to pounds per minute, which is what we like to have. And when we do that, it's going to give us 57.05 pounds per minute. Now you can take this information, go to compressor maps, and find out where it's going to be. And we'll do that in a minute. If you remember from what I told you, you can plan on between 7 and 8 horsepower to the ground per pound of air moved through your system. Uh, you might, if you remember, on a drag strip, you can you'll probably average around seven. On a dyno, you'll probably hit around eight. Uncorrected, if you're on a dyno like at an event where they want to give you a big fat correction factor, so you're a happy guy, you may get a fair bit more. But you know, real power, seven to eight horsepower. So that's going to give us basically 400 to 450 horsepower. But where? Where is it going to give us 40 to 50 horsepower? We have. Our, our boost on that was, what did that turn out to be? It was 47, no. The boost here was, 
44.1. That was our 4.0 pressure ratio. It's 44.1. That is at, not where I live, that's at sea level. And so, right now we need to do some figuring out. Okay, so where we're going to be testing, so we're going to, I'm going to put a number here. So let's go back to, let's go back here. Our engine at, at sea level was moving how much? 800. 826.9 CFM. That's how much it's moving at sea level. But I'm not at sea level. All the testing you're going to see, all the turbos we're going to test on the dyno are here where I live in Cedar City, Utah. We're 5,500 feet, maybe 5,700 feet, depending where you're at, because we're kind of in a Healy, up on the hill, on the bench, or down in the valley. We're going to say around 5,500 feet. Okay? And so, if you remember, at sea level, zero feet, um, the ambient air pressure is 14.7 psi. That's what you have around you all the time. When your gauge reads zero, it's 14.7 psi. If you remember, what your, your gauge reads pressure above atmosphere. So one psi is 15.7 psi absolute, one psi gauge. So where I live at 5,500 feet, our pressure is basically 11.9 psi, which is a fair bit less than sea level. One of my big gripes about living here, to be honest with you, I kind of I moved here thinking I'd be lower elevation than what I was. I was too dumb to actually look at a map. But um, I was hoping to be lower elevation because I'm a horsepower junkie, and as such, I want to be like negative 8,000 feet. That's perfect elevation for me. Negative 8,000 feet, go real fast. But I live, instead I live at 5,500 feet above sea level, so turbos are a big deal to me because they make it so I can go fast. And because um, naturally aspirated here, everything's so slow. It's awful. But, so we now have to do some math because we're at a 4.0 pressure ratio, right? We know that. What is my boost here going to be? It's certainly not going to be as much as it is in sea level. Go back, 4.0. Well, let's multiply it by our pressure ratio or by our ambient pressure. That's going to give us our PSI absolute. That's real pressure. And that's going to be 47.6 PSI absolute. That's, that's the overall total pressure going to our engine. But our gauge is not going to read that, because remember, this is just above gauge pressure, which, or above atmosphere, which is 11.9. So we've got to minus that 11.9. That's going to give us 35.7 PSI gauge. So if you're running a 4.0 pressure ratio at sea level, what was it here? It was 44.1 sea level, 44.1 psi gauge. That's the difference you're going to see in your boost gauge if you run at a 4.0 pressure ratio. As you come up the mountain, your turbo is going to run a little bit harder. That's why when people do corrected numbers in the dyno, it's not accurate because the air's thinner up here the turbo is going to spin faster. So it makes up a lot of the difference. You'll run a higher pressure ratio here than you will at altitude at sea level. But, you know, we're going to be able to manipulate that, so we're going to set it right at a 4.0 pressure ratio. We can make that happen. And so we're going to be able to test whatever pressure ratio we want to see what kind of power we get here to the ground at 5,500 feet. And so we're going to set it to 35.7 PSI. We're going to map it out on our compressor and see what we can do. But with, if this is all we got, we should predict what kind of power we can expect at a 35.7 PSI at 3,000 RPM. Will it be enough for 550 horsepower? No. How much will it be good for? Not sure. We know that at sea level, this is good for 400 to 450 horsepower. So obviously, it's going to be a lot less here because we're losing quite a bit of boost pressure. So now we're going to find out what kind of power we can predict with um, this kind of stuff. So let's write. We're going to have the CFM, let's see, we're going to have, well, it'll be fine. Okay, so, if you remember my talk to you on lesson two, the quick and dirty way to use density, density ratios to predict airflow. We're going to do that now using our new 85% method, okay? So, we already discovered, if we, we'll go back and do it again, we have a 4.0 pressure ratio, we have a 72% efficiency, we're going to multiply that by 
And that's going to give us our 2.44 density ratio. That is the density ratio we're going to achieve with a 72% efficient compressor and um, at this level. And we'll, we'll do better when we add intercooling, but for now, that's our density ratio. So we're going to figure out the density ratio at 5,500. Um, not, this is our sea level, CFM. What, it is, what is it here at 5,500 feet where our air is so much thinner? You should know the answer by now, but in case you don't, we'll figure it out. So we have our 233.72 CFM. We've been using that for three episodes now. We have our 2.44 um, density ratio. And that's going to equal our 570.26 CFM. We're going to take that number and multiply it by 45%. We're going to add one times 1.45, excuse me, 45% more, not less. So 1.45, and that's this, how much CFM we're going to be drawing in with intercooling at our altitude up here, Cedar City, Utah. So we're going to multiply this by 1.45. That is going to give us 826.9 CFM. You might notice it's the same number here. Probably figured that already, but the CFM has not changed one bit. 4.0 pressure ratio and at the sea level is going to give me this many CFM in that motor. 4.0 pressure ratio in Cedar City, Utah gives me the same CFM. But nothing has changed as far as CFM is concerned. The only thing that has changed is every cubic foot it draws in in Cedar City has less mass than any cubic foot here. So even though the cubic feet is the same, the mass of each unit is less. And so that's how we're going to compensate to figure out how much power we're making here where I live. Since I don't live at sea level, I don't really care what I make at sea level. I want to know what I make here. That's it. So you can use this to figure out where you live <coughs> anywhere. I'm going to get some little tricks to do that, some stuff so you can figure out where you are at. All right. Um, one thing we need to notice we didn't do yet is we have 11.9 is our PSI ambient or absolute atmosphere, whatever you want to call it. Ambient, atmosphere, absolute. It's like atmosphere, it's not absolute. 11.9 here, 14.7 is sea level. When you divide this, you're going to get your, your simple thing. This is going to give you 0.81, okay? So our air here is dense. That's, that's what we have here in Cedar City. I need to explain some more stuff to you right now that you maybe have not gotten yet. Maybe I've, I don't know, I may have like unintentionally informed otherwise, but we've been using 0 0.069 as our multiplier, right? 0 0.069 times your CFM, whatever that may be, is going to equal your pounds per minute. The 0.069 oops, is not sea level. The 0 0.069 is directly calculated to get you to your turbo map conditions. Your turbo maps are not calculated at sea level. At least most of them. Maybe some are. Maybe some are, are written at standard conditions, but for the most part, the 0 0.069 conversion, which you'll find in many turbo books. Most turbo books say multiply by 0 0.069. What that is, is that is, um, that equates to a mass of air. So every, this is saying every cubic foot of air weighs this amount. And here's the conditions where it actually weighs 0 0.069 pounds. On an 85 degree day, you know, no storm or no crazy barometric conditions, just on an average day, 85 degrees at about 1,700 feet, my guess. That's going to give you your weight. So the actual thing is it's saying at 85 degrees at 28.4 inches of mercury, which is HG. That is the compressor map we're going to show, we're going to talk about. And when you look at a compressor map, you can say, okay, this was tested at 85 degrees and at 28.4 inches of mercury, this turbo can move this amount of air. This is actual mass it can move. If the air is a lot hotter, 
that map would be changed. So they have to they have to have a standard so you can compare their maps and can compare with other people. So the standard is 85 degrees at 28.4 inches of mercury, which is around seven uh, it equals about 1,700 feet. Okay. So my air where I live, I don't know 1,700 feet, right? I live at 5,500 feet. So I've done the math. You're gonna have to believe me on this. I'll, I'll show you some different altitudes so you can compensate for your own area. Uh, hopefully you just believe me. But my air weighs here 0 0.059 pounds per cubic foot. So when I do my calculations, I'm not gonna calculate times 0 0.069 because that's not gonna give me the air that I have here locally, okay? So we have 826.9 CFM. We're going to use my calculation here, which is for my air here, not at sea level, not at turbo map conditions. This is my air here, 0 0.059. So multiply this by 0 0.059. That's going to give us 48.78 pounds per minute. If we do our um, calculation, which we've done before, we take our, our pounds, and if we have seven horsepower, that's going to give us 341. If we do it by eight horsepower, that's going to give us about 390. So I can expect at a 4.0 pressure ratio, this is what we're going to test, at a 4.0 pressure ratio, we're going to be moving 48.78 pounds per minute, actually moving, not what the turbo says, the turbo thinks we're moving more because it's at its conditions, but we're actually moving this amount at a 4.0 pressure ratio. And we can expect between 340, that's going to be on the low side because like as I said, this is a drag race, this is a dyno. This is what it'd probably show on the drag strip. This is probably close to what it's going to show on the dyno. So we're going to look between 350, 390 horsepower. Will my truck at 3,000 RPM at this pressure ratio make between 340 and 390 to the ground, uncorrected, here at 5,500 feet elevation. We'll find out, but that's, that's my prediction. Right now, that's what I'm gonna predict this is my power range from what we've done so far. So I'm gonna give you guys some, I'm gonna erase it, so you may wanna push pop, back, well, when you can watch it again. I'm gonna give you your conversion for your, your altitude. So the point zero six nine is again for 85 degrees at 100 feet. Okay, so let's start up here and make a list. I'm going to erase this as well. So if you live on the sea borders and you're right on the sea level area, at zero feet, the weight of your air on an 85 degree day um, is going to be 0 0.073. So if you take that same CFM, 826.4, nine, excuse me, CFM, and multiply it by 0 0.073, you'll get your pounds per minute. And I haven't done these because I have a whole bunch, but that would be your calculation to figure out how much air is moving through your system, which will give you a lot more. Well, we'll compare real fast. So we'll do my altitude versus sea level. Remember, I can do 340 horsepower at my level. They can do how much can he do at his level. So if we're taking 826.9 times 0 0.073, so he has 60, 60.3, same pressure ratio, same amount of CFM, his just weighs more to begin with, everyone weighs more. So he gets 60 compared to my whopping, what was mine just a minute ago, 48. So he has 12 more than me, so let's take that times 8. So he's got a potential for 482 horsepower, potential is 390. That's quite a big swing from 5500 down to sea level. Now again, that's at a 4.0 pressure ratio. When you drive up to here, your turbo will by itself increase its pressure ratio. You'll make a higher pressure ratio here than you do at sea level. But if you set your wastegate so you're exactly at 4.0, this is the power you can expect at sea level, and which is almost 100 more than you can expect here at 5,500 feet. Again, you can see why I see, I feel I've picked the wrong place to live. I need to move down where the power is really free. It's almost free. It's just, you know, it's like free power living down lower. Okay, so zero feet. Do your calculations 0 0.073. If you live at 1,000 feet, your calculation is going to be 
Multiply your CFM by that for your pound. 2,000 feet is 0.068. I figured all these out for you. You can probably figure out yourself or just believe me. Whatever you want, it's up to you. But these will get you, these are actual numbers here. 3,000 feet is 0 0.065. See a pattern here, it's going down, not very much. 4,000 feet is 0 0.063. 5,000 feet. 0 0.060 and by 5500, 0.059. So these are the calculations. Look at them at where you are. If you're 2500 feet, split the difference. It'll be dead close. And so this should take care of most of the people in America. If not, give me a call. I'll tell you what you are. But um, so that is the numbers you're going to use to multiply by your figured out CFM to figure out the actual airflow through your engine at your altitude wherever you live. Okay, we're moving on now. Hopefully, last look, rewind, pause, figure it out. There you go. So, we have a prediction. We know we're going to make, we don't know, we believe, I believe, we're going to make between 350 and 390 horsepower at 3,000 RPM at a 4.0 pressure rate, 4.0 pressure ratio here at my shop, and we're going to find that out soon. But the goal was not 390 horsepower. The goal was 550 horsepower, as I had written before, and I'll write again. 550 horsepower, 3,000 RPM. How are we going to get there? I decided I do not want to increase my RPM to meet my goal. I'm going to do it with boost. This is a class on turbo, not a turbo. It's not a class on how to wind your engine and how to build your engine for more RPM. Both have merit. A lot easier to just add more boost. So if you, if you don't want to get into your engine too deep, and you're looking just to add some power, we're going to do it by adding more boost. So that's what we're going to do right here. And so, let's see where I'm at here. We're going to go back to our wanted numbers. We know, if you remember from last week, we decided we want about 75 pounds per minute. That's how much we think we need this system. The reason, because 5 horsepower divided by 7 horsepower per minute, um, gives us 78.5. If, if you think you're going to get 8 horsepower per minute, that's going to give you, you're going to need 68.5, 75, excuse me, pounds. So we're between 7 and 8, 78 to 68. We go in the middle, it's less than 75, but 75 looks better. It's a round, happy number. So we're going to, we have chosen 75 pounds a minute, hoping that will be enough that our engine will be a little bit better than the seven horsepower per pound, and uh, d not believing it's gonna be quite this good. So we're shooting for 78, 70, excuse me, pounds per minute. Now we're gonna go back to our simple way to figure out how much pressure we need. We have 233, as we've discussed many times, 233.72 CFM. We're going to multiply it by 0 0.059 because that is my air here. If I have this many CFM in my engine at 0 0.059, that's going to give me 13.78 pounds per minute. And we need 75. So let's do a simple math. Let's, what's the ratio from this to this? Very, very simple to find out. 75 divided by 13.78. That's going to give us a 5.44 pressure ratio. Excuse me, not pressure ratio, density ratio. We have the de that's the density we have is this. We, need, uh, we don't need de pressure, we want a density ratio. That's the density we need. We need 5.44 times the density of atmosphere. That's density ratio. So how do we get there? Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some simple algebra. Hopefully, I did this right. I didn't double check it. I probably should have. We'll find out. So we want to know pressure ratio. Okay, that is the question mark. This is uh, maybe third algebra now. When I was in high school, it took me to school to learn this, but maybe now it's boxes with dots from Common Core. I don't know. But right now, we need pressure ratio. We know that we have a 0.72% compressor efficiency. I'll leave these here. We know that we're going to multiply that by 85% because that's my new multiplier I just gave you. And it's going to use this. It's going to since we're at a higher pressure ratio, it's going to be a little off. But at least it's going to be ballpark. We're going to ballpark and see how close we get. We know that when we uh, add 
filling. It's going to add 45% to our density, so 1.45. And that's going to equal our density ratio, which is 5.44. So, you know, we're going to start, we want to know this. These are all multiplied. We're going, to, we're going to take this, divide by all these numbers. We're going to take this, divide by the cumulative of 0.72 times 0.85 times 1.45. And knock these out here. Remember that you divide them by that and they go away. So the pressure ratio equals this divided by that. Okay? So that ends up being, for those who love doing algebra, I think that's algebra. I don't remember. I know it's not geometry. It's probably algebra. I th this is going to end up at 6.13 pressure ratio. Or... 550 horsepower at 3,000 RPM. Okay. So we know we have a 6.13. Let's go back and figure out, what, so what kind of boost is that going to make? What kind of boost we make in where I live? We're going to take our six point one three times 11.9 minus 11.9, and that is going to equal 61 psi. Let's get there. That is not uh, exactly grandma territory. That's getting that's getting up there for a single a single turbocharger. It's a lot of pressure. A lot of guys could do that um, for a ball bearing turbocharger. I'll be running for years and years. Those things just don't blow up. A drone bearing turbocharger, that you know, they have the, the new ones are better. They've got the 360 thrust. A lot of them do. Some of them don't. Make sure you have a 360 thrust because it'll get it'll just get wear out. All that pressure against that will just wear it out. Or use some high zinc oil. We can help you out with that. But um, you're gonna want just make sure you're, you're ready for this that your turbo doesn't blow up. I have blown up turbos. Yes. Or am I gonna push a turbo this high in the dyno? Absolutely. We have. We're gonna we're gonna push. This high, I think I know people push them higher, so we're going to go this high, and we're going to predict that we're going to be there. So that's going to be our guess is going to be for 550 horsepower, going to be at 3,000 RPM at 61 pounds of boost psi gauge. All right, so here we are. We know what we need. We know what. What kind of pressure ratio is that? Well, we know it's a 6.13, so let's go look at maps. What kind of turbos? Where is that going to fall on the map? Let's go take a look. I'm going to go over here to the computer now, and uh, we're going to switch screens, and I'm going to go to a couple different compressor maps. We're going to go over a few maps and look at this stuff. Okay. What I'm looking at here, let's go over to this one. This is the new Borg Warner SXE 362. I sell a lot of these to guys. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, this is technically could do 500 to 550 horsepower. It'll definitely do 550 horsepower on a dyno day. Will it do 550 to the ground? Sea level, probably. Here, I have my question. Let's take a look. So let's look over here at pressure ratio. We know, uh, let's start with our first one. We know we have a 4.0 pressure ratio. Okay. Let's go back and see if this turbo will fit our goals. We need a 4.0 pressure ratio. Oh, where's that thing at? And it's going to move 50, what was it here? Where did we go? 48.78 pounds a minute. So 4.0 is right here. Doesn't move 48.78 pounds a minute. Add that. 4.0, 50. Okay, we're we're barely on the map here. This is just barely starting. So that should do or that that. But remember, this was um, this was figured out at my altitude. Uh, I never figured out what it'd be in turbo map conditions. Let's figure it out real, real fast. Uh, we have 826. Um, 0.9 CFM times 0.069 to get to compressor map conditions. 
So it's actually, this thing actually needs to flow 57 pounds a minute to make it be able to flow my, because remember this map is not done in 5,500 feet. Let's go over to 57 pounds a minute, which is right, eh, right here in the middle. 57 pounds a minute at a four point pressure ratio. Okay, so this guy can easily, this turbo, happy right here, very easily, and my Cummins 12 inch engine at a 4.0 pressure ratio has room to spare. We're in a very high efficiency between 72 and 74 percent, so about 73 percent efficiency, which is close enough that I'm not going to bother redoing our calculations. And so this is easy. This is a, this is a no-brainer. We can for the 4.0 pressure ratio. This guy has it, no problem. If we run up our speed, keep it a 4.0, and just increase our RPM going to move this guy over here. As our 3200, 3300, as we increase our RPM, it's going to stay at 4.0. It's going to make more and more power. But for our 3000 RPM, we can expect to be right here on the map. And that's, so this map works fine for that. Okay, what about our big guy, the big dog? We have 75 pounds of air we need. No problem. This guy, eh, this guy barely touches it. This would probably not be my choice of turbo for my altitude. Um, and I won't do it here because remember this is 75 pounds of air here. You're not going to get it there. Or, or, yeah, so 75 pounds of air here means I need a turbo to be over here. So if I want, you know, it, does it go over here? Probably. But, um, you know, it's going to be kind of kind of tight. So, but we're not even at the, oh, wait a minute, we're not at the 4.0 pressure ratio anymore. We are up at 6. Okay, what does it look like there? <coughs> Got a problem. The map doesn't go that high. Let's go to a different map. Let's see if we can find one that goes up there. Here's the... Um, here we go. This is a new 369. This guy moves a lot more air. Room to spare. Uh, let's go up here. We got a problem. This turbo only goes to 5 point of pressure ratio. What are we going to do? Well, the answer is simple. This is not the end of what the turbo can do. This is the end of what they tested it to. They say we don't want the end of our turbo turbo wheels to go more than 561 meters per second. Well, I don't care. I think it can do more. If you, there are certain turbos where for this line, it's a bad idea. These ones, people go over them all the time. So we're going to be somewhere up. 4.6, up here, this is where we're going to be. As you can see, we are not going to be at 72% efficiency. 72% stops at 4.0. It does not go any higher. As you go higher than that, 70, 68, 66. So hopefully our intercooler makes up a lot of difference. We may end up having to need some more boost. 61 may not do it because we, we calculated 72% efficiency rather than the 50 we're going to get because we want this thing crank and boost. So we're going we're gonna to really push this guy well past its design limits because we wanted a 3,000 RPM. If I was smarter, I'd say, I'd say let's drop the boost down here and worry about RPM. But again, this is not about building RPM. This is about making boost. It would probably be a little bit smarter to do this with of compounds so everything could be within the map. But people do this all the time, and so we're going to give it a shot. Can we make 550 horsepower at 3,000 RPM? at 61 PSI gauge. We'll find out. We'll find out. That's we're gonna, that's, we're gonna, that's what we're shooting for. So anyway, that's our predictions. Our next our next uh, turbo school uh, is going to be testing. It's time to start testing. We're going to we've made some predictions. Are we right? Are we wrong? Are we in the ballpark? And so this is going to be fun. So we're, we're planning on next Tuesday, same time. If something changes, look, watch for our Facebook page, go to our home page. We'll announce when it's going to be. But we're, right now we're shooting for next Tuesday. We've got the truck. Uh, ready for it. For the most part, we're gonna, we have a few things we want to fix on it. We're also preparing to make take our test truck on a race the following Saturday. So we'll be doing a lot of stuff on this thing. But um, look for us next week sometime. We're testing turbos. At least we're going to start with one. We're going to start, uh, I haven't decided, probably the 362. That's going to hit our, see if we hit our 400 between 340 and 390 at 4.0 pressure ratio. Let's see if that is accurate. So we're going to start there. And then as these series continue, we're going to test lots of turbos. We'll probably make some predictions on what this turbo can do and see how it does. So uh, stay tuned. If you need anything, Diesel World-wise, give us a call. 
You can obviously buy parts from anybody, anybody all across the internet. So hopefully, uh, you'll, if this is helpful to you, and this is information to help, you know, help us out, buy your parts through us because we pretty much get the same price as anybody else. And we have it, you know, we're putting it on our website soon, but decided to test to you. We can.